Hi everybody, this is Matt McCoy from Loop Community. Today I'm going to show you how to change the tempo of a loop that you download. So we have a lot of people ask us, okay, how can we actually speed it up or slow it down? I don't like the original tempo. Well, if you have Ableton, it's really easy. I'm going to show you now. So basically I have two tracks. One's the cue, one's the loop. And we're going to go ahead and just drag in the loop that we're going to use, which is, uh, let's use Forever Rain. I'm going to drag my cue file in here and my stereo loop file here. And we'll right click and we're going to rename this to Forever Rain. And I'm also going to set the tempo. And I know what the original tempo is because in the file name it says Forever Rain, key of C, 83. It's very important that you know that. So we'll go to Edit Launch Tempo. I'm going to type in 83. Hit enter. Let's go ahead and hit play, and it should Intro, be in time. Intro, two, three, four. Perfect. So a mistake a lot of people make is they decide that they want to do this at 90. So they set this to 90 BPM and then hit play, but listen to what happens. Intro, two, three, four. The click is completely out of sync with the loop. So. What you need to do, let's go and change this back to 83. What we need to do is we need to use a feature in Ableton called warping. Warping is very powerful. It basically allows you to time stretch the audio. So, you know, speed it up, slow it down without it losing its timing or its audio quality in a significant matter. So you can also change the key. You could pitch it up and down. So I'll show you how to do that. So to warp this track, I'm going to double click on the loop. And there's a button down here that says warp. Now, if I hit warp right now, it's actually going to warp it at whatever tempo is up here in the top left corner in this tempo box. So if I were to hit warp right now, it's going to warp it at 90 BPM, which would not be good because we actually want to warp it at the original tempo. So you want to make sure, and this is a step that trips a lot of people up, you want to make sure that this box has the original tempo in there. So I'm going to type 83. And now I'll hit warp. And you can see there's a little box right here below that says segment BPM. And this shows you what it warped at or what the original tempo is. And it says 83, so we're in good shape. If that said something different than the original tempo, we'd be in trouble. So just make sure that that says the original tempo and you're set. We also want to make sure that we warp the cue file because we don't want the cues to be out of time with the loop. So I warped that. Now let's hit play. Intro two. Three, and four. I'm going to actually change the tempo on the fly by clicking and dragging in the tempo box. So we're at 97 now, but it's all still in time. Pretty cool. Let's say you wanted to change the key of this loop now. So the key of the loop is in C, but say you're like, well, we actually want to do it in D. I can double click on the loop and there's a little transpose knob down here. And let's go ahead and bump it up. These are half steps. So now I'm in the key of D. Intro, two, three, four. Do you hear how it's a little choppy though? That's because the warping mode that we're using is called beats. Beats would be really good if this track had just drum beats in it, but it doesn't. It has keys in it, it's got pad a shaker, so I'm going to change it to complex. Verse two, three, four. You hear how much smoother that is? So with warping, it's very powerful because you can change the key, you can change the tempo, and uh, really customize the loops to how you need to use them. Hope that helps. We're glad you're part of the community.